Well, hello! Today, I bring you a project I'm very excited about because it's something that I have been looking forward to, honestly, all year. Um, my biggest video was this past video uh, from last year, and I wanted to do a better iteration of that project, and that is Santa Claus. You already knew from the title, but uh, this is a really fun little, look at that, isn't it cute? Uh, classic Santa and it's super easy I uh, used just one knife some sandpaper a little bit of paint but aside from that you really only need a knife to do this project and it's in a piece of uh, two by two by four inch basswood that I cut in half diagonally and so uh, more on that but let's get into the project all right guys enjoy uh, and yes before I forget this video is sponsored by fundamentals of wood carving it's an me. It's an online school that I started uh, to help people who are trying to learn to carve realistic faces in wood. So check that out. It's in the link below. It's a yearly subscription. You can pay for it uh, monthly. It's a little bit more expensive that way. And there's a seven day free trial. So the idea is you get to learn all of the important elements of carving realistic faces, proportion, symmetry, application, wood, tools, sharpening, all the stuff that goes into what I do every day. And uh, anyway, that's that. Let's get back to the video. Okay, now to start this project, I'm going to use a piece of basswood. This is a four inch by two inch piece of basswood cut diagonally on a bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a handsaw or a scroll or any other available saw with an angled uh, table if you're using power or if you're using a, a handsaw. If you can fix the piece of wood so that you're not endangering your fingers, that's important. The other thing to mention is that if you're a new carver, or really any carver at all, should use a carving glove. And that just means that you should wear something on your non-dominant hand, as well as maybe on your thumb and forefinger of the dominant hand holding the knife. This ensures that you're not slicing your hand open and is a, just a generally good idea. Anyway, the tools that we're using today are pretty simple, and uh, we've designed it that way intentionally, so as not to overcomplicate things. I've got about an inch and a half blade. This is made by Deep Holler Knives, and uh, it's a beautiful blade that I had custom done for me. Thanks to Deep Holler for that. I really like their blades. But uh, Flex Cut also makes a great uh, knife as well, and other manufacturers, many manufacturers of great knives. But uh, and just a ruler as well. So nothing too complicated here, guys. Pretty straightforward. Let's get right into it. Um, the first measurement that I want to make is from the top of the, <laughs> excuse the price, obviously I bought this wood, um, it's from the top of the wood, oh, <laughs> a pencil, don't forget a pencil, and yours has to say Bird Lady Contracting on it, right, so there you go, if you need a contractor. Uh, I'm going to mark from the top of the piece of wood to the bottom of the hat. Now, Santa Claus, he has a pretty uh, infamous hat and it's important to be able to capture that well to get Santa right. So at the inch mark is where the bottom of the brim is going to be, but I'm actually going to turn that line downward to create the kind of arc, because the hat's going to kind of pull downward as it moves towards his ears, just like that. And another mark from the top of the piece of wood, about three uh, quarters of an inch from the top, from, the, from this new line, or a quarter of an inch from the top, if you will, is going to be the top of the furry kind of brim of the hat. All right, and then that seems kind of high, I know, but we'll have a, a pretty uh, not so pointy hat and the ball coming around. All right, so this is gonna be that wide brim of his hat, if that's the right term, I'm not sure. Okay, so all in all, you're looking at, uh, oh, about an inch and a half width on this piece from one side of the brim of the hat to the other. All right, the next line I want to mark is about a half an inch from the brim of the hat down. And that line is going to indicate the eyes. I'm just shy of that mark. I'm just going to keep that line fairly straight for now. Okay. From there, I'm going to go down another half an inch, and that indicates the nose. And... Uh, Finally, another quarter inch from there to indicate the mouth or the uh, bottom of the mustache as it opens up, right? So we're gonna have a little V for that area. 
because the mustache will be here. Okay, and don't stress too much about these lines just yet. Um, just to recap, we've got an inch from the top of the hat to the bottom at the forehead. We've got a half an inch to the eye line, half an inch to the nose, quarter inch to the mouth. All right. And the nose can have a little bit of an upward turn to it, so draw those lines appropriately. And it's time to get into this piece of wood. All right, so the first thing I'd like to do is uh, kind of take the edges of the wood off in case you're kind of new to carving. You probably have softer hands and you want to make sure that uh, you're not stabbing yourself with the corners. And so I'm going to take those corners off. Notice that the grain behaves in such a way as not to want to uh, split in one direction and uh, it wants to split and be uh, out of control in another direction. Just being mindful of this is helpful when you're carving. If the blade doesn't want to go through one way, just try and move the blade the opposite direction. Turn the piece of wood around and try coming the opposite direction. Alright, so now that we've cleaned off the edges of the wood, I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to narrow the sides of the hat. So coming up from this inch mark up maybe just below it, I'm just going to start to take the wood down. Notice that when I'm pulling on the piece of wood, I'm using a uh, pulling motion that my thumb is resisting the knife blade as it comes up, but my thumb is never in the path of the blade. Right? You don't want to be missing the blade and going into your finger, so keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to be carving a lot quicker than you're going to want to be carving at home, if you're starting out especially. So try not to make big cuts, try to make small cuts, just like this. All right. I've been wood carving for, you know, 17 years. And uh, not in this style, mostly... Um, carving with gouges and chisels. And so I've built up the hand strength. But for those of you at home who are just starting out, uh, be patient with yourself, take your time, and make sure that your tools are nice and sharp. I like to keep a leather strop, which I'll show you in just a bit. And uh, that's gonna make sure that this thing stays razor sharp. So if you're a wood carver, you've got a sharp knife, get yourself a razor sharp uh, blade by using your leather strop. All right, so I'm rounding off that hat, just like so. Taking the sides down, and I'm leaving this side because I'm actually gonna draw a little ball that comes down kind of alongside the face, right right in tandem with the face here. So let's draw that ball. Get a little closer so you can see. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, and I'm gonna come just above that ball and create a V cut, just like that. Now I really like using these uh, half or diagonally cut pieces of four by uh, two by two basswood because it's really easy to remove a lot of material quickly, and it's awesome for ornaments. So you could very easily turn this into a magnet that would go, say, on your fridge or your kid's fridge. Make this for somebody that you have in your life, your loved one, your wife, and it would also make a really great ornament. And so, who wants to go out and spend you know seventy bucks on a handmade ornament? when you can make one at home. All right, so now I'm coming above the brim of the hat. Notice that I've started making scooping cuts, like so, turning the blade as I move through. I don't want to turn the blade too quickly because we'll end up dulling the blade or potentially even chipping the edge. Most important thing here is I'm just giving a little bit of separation from the brim and the uh, top of the hat. I'm also going to take off the hard corner here and define the bottom of the hat, like so. This is where the hat meets the forehead. All right, now I'm coming in uh, probably about, uh, say, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say a quarter of an inch. Yeah. And I'm also kind of taking cuts out of the side here of the forehead. One cut here, angling my blade, 
another cut here, stop cut. Stop cut is just a cut that tells the chip that you're cutting where to stop pulling or to stop uh, coming, uh, or you know what I mean. All right, see that? Now I can come around and define the edge. This is where a glove would be really handy because if you miss, you can get in, <laughs> into a situation where you need to go to the hospital and nobody wants that. All right, so coming around the brim of the hat like so. Beautiful. And this is gonna end up being the forehead, this area up here. Now we can define the eyebrow ridge. Okay, so I'm coming in. This is a V cut, right? So I'm coming in at an angle. I don't know if you can see that well. Coming in at an angle. Here, let's see if we can adjust or focus. There we go. Coming in at an angle and the opposite angle, right at that line that we drew, half inch from the brim of the hat down, and just coming along like so, creating a little indentation there. And just like we did on the forehead, it's not just gonna be one cut here, it's gonna be three cuts. So one here, another stop cut, one relief cut here, and another one on this side. Just like so. Okay. And make that a little deeper once again. Come back in. The other nice thing about carving in the corner of the wood is it's a lot easier to see um, what you're doing uh, and to create uh, depth. Right? It's a lot easier to create depth because uh, a lot of that depth is already created for you in this shape. All right, now I'm gonna establish the bottom of the nose, and the bottom of the nose is simply coming up at the angle defined earlier. So it's a cut here, this angle, about a 45, and another opposing 45. And then I'm gonna come up to that line, just like so. Not removing a lot of wood here, because I wanna leave room for what's below the, the uh, nose, which is, <laughs> I just hinted at it, the mustache. All right, so I've got that nose set in, at least as far as I want it to be set in now. And I'm going to uh, start to define uh, the bottom of the mustache. Now, it seems a little premature to do that, but the uh, bottom of the mustache is going to be a quarter inch from the bottom of the nose. So that line that we marked earlier. And in this case, instead of being a kind of an upward-facing V, it's going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be a downward-facing V. So I'll cut in for that mustache, like so. Boom. Boom. There's the idea, okay. Extend those lines down a bit. Okay. Clean that up. Okay, now just above those lines, I'm actually gonna come up with some lines that run parallel. You can draw them first, Whoa. or you can just kind of fly by the seat of your pants, but I recommend you draw them first. Just like so, a V following this line here of the mustache, but just about uh, half an inch above that. And then a line that V's out to connect to this hat brim, all right? So just like that. So it's almost like a little bit of a, of a rectangle cut out of here. And the same thing over here. Try to match it as best you can to the edge of the hat, all right? Come down and up, just like so. Okay, now I'm going to come across the forehead. I'm gonna define the width of the forehead, which will be just about, let will say an inch and an eighth or so. So a little bit um, narrower than it is now. So I'll come across on one side with a, this is what I call a triangle cut. And actually it's what a lot of people call a triangle cut. It's a chip carving term. So it means I come in at one angle, like so. I come in at another angle, meeting that point. And then I finish with one more, like so. And in this case, the bottom cut, the last cut, is gonna be the cut that defines part of that line that we drew earlier. Okay, so let's get the focus on here. One more time, show you that, do it on the other side. So we're coming straight in, this side of the face, like so. This is defining the temple of the face. 
Next is the brim of the hat. And finally is the uh, beard line. Okay, so coming into that beard line. And what should happen is if we did our job properly, the chip should come out. And if it didn't, no worries. Just go back over the lines until it does. Boom. Okay, you see that? We've successfully defined the sides of the face. All right, that's important because the number one mistake that beginner carvers make is they make the face way too flat. And using the corner prevents you from doing that. So I'm going to come back in and define the side. Go a little bit deeper. How about that? Very good. All right, now I'm going to come back in and define the line that I talked about earlier, the top of the mustache. like so. Then I'll come in. The same kind of triangle cut we did up here over at the sides of the face. We'll do that at the sides of the nostrils. Okay, And this is about um, a quarter of an inch apart, not a half. So we did one cut at the side of the nostril. The next cut along the mustache. And then the next one following the, what's called the smile line. Okay, So about a quarter inch apart. Same thing here, along the nostril, like so. On the side of the nose, and at the smile line. Just like that, we've defined the nostril. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is uh, make sure and emphasize that Santa's happy, right? And the brow ridge has to be raised to make Santa happy. That means I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut off the hard edge of the brow ridge, like so. One, two. All right. Very good. Yes. See how much happier he looks? <laughs> okay, maybe not yet, but he will look a little bit happier because of this cut. There we go. Okay. The next thing, another kind of V cut or something actually similar to this triangle cut is is in the corner of the eyes. So this is uh, maybe even an eighth of an inch apart from one another, but I'm coming in. This is called the mid-face groove, but that doesn't matter. Don't worry about the anatomical terms. Just a cut at the inside corner of the eye. All right, I'm gonna do another one here, like so. And then a relief cut here. If it doesn't come out, just go back over the lines. Boom, and I'll do the same thing to the other side. All right, this time in slow motion. Sorry, that's annoying. Okay, straight in. Like so. How about that? Clean that up a bit. What we're doing is we're cutting the inside corner of the eye, which has to stick in the wood. It has to be uh, set into the face. The eye sits in the face, not on top of it. And most beginners carve these fish eyes that kind of bulge out of the face. All right, so we've got the inside corner of the eye. And uh, now I'm going to uh, carve the bottom of the eye. And I'm gonna come underneath like so with a stop cut like so. And there it is. Same thing on the other side, right at the bottom of the eye. So I'm about, uh, say, an eighth of an inch from the line that we just created, the brow ridge, down. And I'm creating a stop, or a V cut rather, right there, just like that. All right, and that's the bottom of the eye, or the eye bag. And I'm going to uh, connect this line to my brow ridge by coming up like so, 
and creating another V-cut here. Now this creates the bulge of the eye, notice that. And we're cutting below that, that line, that stop cut, to make the eye stand away from the cheek. So notice, it's really just a V-cut, simplifying it here. So coming in at this angle, and then coming in at the opposite angle to relieve the bottom of the eye. And now my job is, like I said, the eye stands above the cheek. So I'm gonna excavate on either side of the nose, like so. Let's see if I can get closer here. So you can see what I'm doing. A little bit of scooping motion on either side of the eye, or the nose rather. <laughs> All right, like that. Beautiful. Now some of these cuts are a little bit more challenging for intermediate carvers. So keep that in mind if you're just starting out. This might be a little bit in ad advanced for you. You might want to try an easier project. There's a lot of great, easy, super easy Santa tutorials out there, but I think this one is something that if you're willing to give yourself the challenge, uh, you can rise to that level and make a really great little project. Okay, so it's at this stage. I'm going to take the uh, narrow the bridge a little, take a little bit out of either side of the nose. Beautiful. All right. Let's deal with the lower area. Let's take a break from this face. Might be stressing you out. It shouldn't. Uh, and so to avoid that, should be fun. Let's work on the hat. So I'm going to work on the sides of the hat and then how it meets the beard. So I'm going to take the beard and uh, my 250 sign here, or 260, which is not too bad of a price for basswood out here. And I'm just going to round it out, make that beard nice and bushy. So I'm coming all the way down. So I'll take the corners off to define the shape of the beard. And you know, you can get really artistic with it. You can create positive and negative shapes. I like to do that when I'm carving. So for instance, if I carve a negative shape here, which is a scoop, I can create a rounded shape on this side. So watch this. See that? Rounded shape, negative shape. That creates a little flow. I'm gonna come beneath a little uh, ball on his hat here as well. Just to make sure that stands out. And round it. Okay. Take the beard down. Good. All right, guys, we're making really good progress here. We're not far from being done. I'm gonna define the top of the ball here. Just go around, just kind of trace it. Not removing a ton of material. And then defining the side of that hat. So coming in, continuing that brow. Or the, sorry, the, the bridge or, or ridge of the hat. Just like so. And I'll create a V cut here to define the edge of the hat as well. Just like so. All right, and then the top of the brim as well. Sharpening that transition up. Beautiful. There's nothing more relaxing. I've been carving wood for, again, 17 years, full time as my career. And I can't think of a better, more satisfying sound and feel uh, than driving a very sharp tool through a piece of basswood. And with simple tools like a knife and a block, you know, and, and a measuring stick and all that stuff, it's just, it really makes your life a lot easier and simpler than using all these fancy tools. So this is actually a nice break for me. I mean, just listen to the sounds that you get from that. Awesome. All right, now I'm gonna round my hat brim. So it looks like a pirate's hat right now. Take 
this down. And it's okay if I lose some of the lines that I made up here separating it out. I can always carve those back in. You know, ideally, I should have waited to establish that line. And so now I have a little bit more work ahead of myself. But hey, can't think of everything. can barely think of some things. <laughs> All right. I don't want to thin it down too much because then it doesn't have that signature poof to it. Coming back in and making that established separation of the brim and top of the hat. Just like so. And I'm going to define the transition between the little tassel that leads to the ball and the brim of the hat with another one of those triangle cuts. Now, if you're really uncomfortable with these triangle cuts, because we're doing tons of them, uh, you know, we've got one here. Let's see how many do we have. One, two, three, uh, well, four at least. Um, four different spots where you need to use these triangle cuts. Did I mention the eyes? I can't remember, but either way, practice them on a scrap piece of wood. You know, if you can uh, just go in one, two, sorry, I was off the camera there. One, two, three, right? Practice these little triangle cuts. One, two, just sit there, practice your triangle cuts. It will really improve your, your whittling in general. So, all right. Now I'm going to establish the uh, roundness of the beard a bit. It's a little flat, right? Because we just haven't done a lot with it yet. So one easy way of fixing that is just taking the knife and cutting some facets in the flat material. And this will really improve the the look of the beard. Also, forgot to establish the bottom of this hat, so I'll do that now. Now again, in these videos, I'm kind of rushing a little bit to get these projects finished for you so that you can see what they look like, but uh, when you're at home, you can just take your time and not feel the you know, anxiety of having to get it done in a time frame. Uh, I really want to take any of these flat spots out too. Now, as much as I want to leave the price tag on this thing, sayonara. Now, notice, even when I'm making these cuts that look like I'm cutting into my thumb, it's missing. I'm actually making sure that the destination of the knife is always away from my hand. Right? I don't want to have to deal with... Um, cutting into my thumbs. I don't have that much hand control, frankly, to avoid it. So it's very, very important, or most people don't. I mean, I have a, a lot of, again, I have a lot of practice in this. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a different situation for me than it is for most, but uh, you do have to try and think, you know, I'm constantly thinking about this. Where is the knife destination if I miss? You know, like, where is it going to go if uh, it doesn't go my way? And so important to keep, keep track of that. Take some of the flatness out of the top of the hat as well. And you know, there's a fair amount of jumping around here, but that's just that's just kind of the way carving is. If you do one thing all on its own, then before you know it, uh, something else might need to come back. Just like, imagine the, the brim. We learned that lesson earlier, right? I cut the brim too early and then realized I needed to bring this all down. Lost my line. So you know, moving around is important to making sure that you don't think, do things prematurely and cut things off. All right, so the major forms, in other words, have to all be blocked in before we work on any detail. Otherwise, we're going to undo a lot of the detail that we did early on. That's what I'm trying to get out here. Now, wood carving is possibly, <laughs> it's just... It's just such a fun pastime. Look in this, in this amount of time, we already have something uh, that we can be proud of and be excited to share with our family members. I'm never more excited uh, to bring a carving in the house to show my wife than when I've done one of these whittle projects. You know, and I make projects that take weeks. I mean, weeks and weeks to carve. You know, I'm doing a life-size buck right now and, uh, you know, eh, kind of excited to show my wife, but 
something about the simplicity of these little carvings, something about that is just even more exciting. It's just, it only took me a little while to make and uh, the reward or the feeling of satisfaction is just so high. You know, because so much of our lives we're consuming, so much of our lives we're just uh, passerbyers. And in carving, you get to be an active participant in the creation of something awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna to continue to remove the saw marks here and then outline the ball of the hat. All right, I didn't wanna to get too carried away off camera, so I'll come back and do the last little bit of this, uh, but what I mean is uh, by getting rid of the saw marks is, is again, texturing these flat areas. So that can just mean using the knife to take off hard corners, especially here as the beard meets the face, and of course on the other side as well. And the same thing with the mustache, kind of rounding the hard edges and adding some texture to the flat areas by just coming along with a knife and detailing it. We can even get uh, some more shape in the beard and mustache by taking big chunks out of the outer edges. So what that means is because hair tends to separate as it goes away from its origin, in other words, the roots of the hair at the face are tightly packed but as they move away from the beard and mustache towards the outside edges of the face, you see more gaps in between the hairs. So I'll start by making some stop and relief cuts at the edges of the beard, just to create that separation. And the key here is not to make them too perfectly patterned. So I don't want one to follow another, which is exactly the space between the next and the next. I want to randomize them a little bit and not make them all the exact same shape. So for instance, I don't like that those two are the exact same kind of shape. So I'll elongate one or soften one a little bit. And uh, in so doing, make it look a little bit more natural. All right, so I'll do another one over, say, right here. Like so. And then maybe one way over here. Make it a little bit thinner and narrower than the others. Again, this ensures that things don't look too perfectly, uh, I don't know, patterned. We always, as humans, tend to make patterns. And, you know, with things like hair, it's not always the case. Santa, you know, combed every hair in the exact same direction. He might have, but he's probably too busy right now. All right, guys. See how much better that looks. And of course, if you have a V-tool, you can start to come in with the V-tool and make some grooves. If you're dedicated to your knife, you can just make a few grooves, kind of like we did by making these big separations in the beard. Um, but you know, you can be sparse with them. You don't have to do a lot of that. Just a few here or there. You can even get away with little scooping cuts like this. Look at my knife. It's turning. Notice the reflection, how it's changing. This is what I'm doing. Using my hand to roll the blade through. I know this is kind of an advanced technique, but it will get you a little bit more direction and some texture in the beard. Like so. Some stop cuts. And I'll really make this uh, indentation below the mustache nice and deep to indicate the mouth. Just like that. All right, <laughs> let's get to the scary part, the eyes. Now, they don't have to be scary. Most people think they are. And that's because, <laughs> well, typically they are kind of scary. Uh, we're going to do our best here to make them as simple as possible, right? We've done a lot of the hard work already. What we really need to focus on is getting a kind of upward turn, right? When Santa smiles, his eyes turn upward like so, almost like little slits. What's happening is the cheeks are pushing the eyelids into the upper eyelids and kind of creating this upward turn, right? That's our classic Santa, almost like an animation, simplified eyes. We'll cut the grooves in with the knife. So what we'll do, less than focus on the eyeball, we'll just carve a little line, a little V cut along the line that we just drew. 
just like so, all right? We're gonna keep these simple as possible. Notice how that kind of makes it look as though he's squinting. And uh, I'll do the same thing to this side. And it's helpful to draw it in because it'll prevent you from making a mistake, making one eyelid way too high, or higher than the other at least, or too low, and it will keep them symmetrical. Okay, so I'll clean up beneath that little slit. And the idea is, the idea, <laughs> get it, is that uh, you can see just a little opening of the eye, but not anything more, not a big deal here, right? Not going too fancy with the eyeball. We would, and uh, I have an online school that talks about carving realistic faces in wood, and there are projects on there whereby we go into realistic depth, carving all of the structures of the eye, going into the anatomy and all of it. But in this case, we don't need that. Just a little hint of uh, detail, just like that, is plenty. It's plenty. You can even go in with your knife blade and kind of scratch a little bit of uh, an eyebrow situation, just above the eye, like so. Watch this. And it's barely there, right? Just a little fuzz. And that's okay. We can come in and do that on here as well. This is a great uh, reason to uh, use a V-tool, though, if you're not familiar with the uh, V-tool. It's a little V-shaped tool that will create these little fuzzes or hairs uh, and in a lot easier of a fashion. So, sorry about the focus on my finger there. You can see a little bit of an indentation there. All right, let's clean this sucker up and uh, call him pretty soon here. Pretty soon here. I'm gonna create a little bit deeper of a separation between the eyes and the cheek because that smiling is really gonna push the cheek up into the eyelid and make this separation a lot deeper. So watch as I come in and deepen beneath the eyelid. And yeah, you could come in with some sandpaper, in fact, I don't mind taking a little sandpaper and uh, taking off the hard edges. Maybe I'll go grab that and come back and show you how to use that. Okay, one thing we can do with the nose too before we get too far. This is for those advanced carvers out there. So if you're a beginner, you know, you don't have to worry about this, but you can take the knife and cut a little triangle cut above the nostril. So this is like a sixteenth of an inch above this uh, lower part of the nostril, coming above it and carve the upper part of the nostril. Take that little triangle cut like so and just see how we have that now. And the same thing over here. So it's very much like a triangle cut with a little bit of a curve to it. And we're just accentuating that and we're getting that nostril flare just like so. How about that? Kind of cool, right? And we'll take a little bit of the pointiness. <laughs> His chin is like an evil villain pointy. Let's take a little bit out of there. No offense to those of you with evil villain pointy noses. I don't think they exist in real life, but uh, I have a pretty pointy nose. So what does it say about me? Hopefully nothing. All right, so there it is. And uh, just like that, we've got a pretty nice representation of Santa. I'm gonna go get some sandpaper and we'll deal with his face. Okay, so I've got my sandpaper here, but before I do that, I wanted to go back to something I mentioned earlier. And that is the strop. And really quickly, just explain how to use the strop. Typically it's a piece of leather with wood to, attached to it. Most of you know about the strop, but for those of you who are new to carving, you want to hold your knife flat against the strap, just like so. You should be able to use your finger to do that and drag it across. Just that simple. The bevel, which is the ground part of the blade that leads to the edge, flat against the bevel or against the leather rather, and just drag it across. Then turn it over in the same, the opposite direction. All right. And this way you're going to have a razor sharp blade. You might even need to do this in the middle of your project to make sure that your blade stays in tip-top shape for your, uh, you know, clean cuts. Anyway, back to the old sandpaper here to clean up his face a bit. 
You know, I like to use the sandpaper in tandem with a small brush of some kind. I have an old brush that came with my uh, wood carving set. It's a vintage wood carving set. But, you know, the sandpaper is best done, if at all, uh, after the project is completed. And this is just going to ensure that any little fuzzes are smoothed out. Any hard edges that are left behind can be a little bit smoother. I don't like to sand all of the details out of the face because I think that would be a mistake. I think you want people to know that it's hand carved, right? And so I don't recommend that at all, but I do think it's nice to just kind of soften some of the features, especially on Santa, because Santa's such a happy little character, isn't he? And he's soft and he's, he's kind of pudgy. So it serves well to soften the edges of your Santa. At least that's what I think. So just like that, look how much more realistic that shape is to the, the softer shapes. So all I'm doing here is some 220 sandpaper uh, getting folded up into kind of a point, if you will, just like that. And I'm using that to get in the tight corners, like so. All right. Now we could get a lot more carried away, again, with detail on this project, but I intentionally left it super duper simple. Uh, that way it'd just be a lot more enjoyable for you folks at home who are newer to carving. You can see those eyebrow hairs showing up here, can you? <laughs> there it is, focus. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad that we did keep it simple. There's a whole lot more you could do if you had a veiner, uh, which is a small little U-shaped tool. You could create some texture on this hat. I mean, you could just get really carried away with this. Um, you know, one thing I might consider doing though before we move back uh, onto the painting process is uh, to take the hard edges off the brim of the hat as well. I forgot to mention that. I want to kind of soften the edges. Don't want it to be too hard because it'll look unnatural that way. Another thing I could do is separate the head from the hat a little bit better by coming parallel with the blade parallel to the forehead, just butting up against the hat like so, coming around, just outlining the edge of the head. And what we'll do is we'll actually give it a little bit more separation, the head from the hat that is, and that will really make it appear as though it's separate, which is ultimately what's happening here. So then I'll come in with my stop cut. Not a lot of pressure. I don't want to push too hard. Just enough to where this little section or chunk comes out. This is where if you had a brush, which I don't know where mine is now, it would come handy, but you could come in and just clean that, pull that chip out. Take your time. If a chip doesn't come out, anytime you're carving, uh, just go back over the cuts until it does. But there you go. There's that separation. And I mean, come on, how fun is that? And uh, let's get to uh, painting here. I might just take a couple of these planes, soften them a bit here and there. But otherwise, let's get to uh, the acrylic paints. Okay, really quickly, before we get into painting, I wanted to show you how to use a veiner. This is a uh, eighth inch veiner. It's really nice and small. And uh, I wanted to show you how you can use it if you have the tool to just clean up little corners. So for instance, on the inside corner of the eye, I can come in under the eye bag. Excuse my uh, strange position there. I don't think you could see what I was doing. There it is. Uh, I can come in and underscore underneath, right? And just clean up any fuzzies in the inside corners of the mouth. Now I could really get carried away and do all kinds of awesome details on the beard. I'm not gonna do that for this project, but I can scratch in or etch in some details with the veiner for the uh, eyebrows as well. Just a couple of quick things I thought I'd show you. Um, anyway, I've sanded the face. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of uh, polycrylic, which is just a uh, protective coating. Uh, it'll dry up shortly and we'll be ready to paint. All right, so I've got some naphthol white and, uh, I'm sorry, some uh, titanium white and some naphthol crimson, which are just uh, two paint colors that are part of a, a five color set, I believe that I have linked below in the description and a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna take some of the water, dilute the, uh, the white, make a thin wash, right? Not so thin that the pigment doesn't, uh, doesn't stick or look good, uh, but thick enough to where, um, or th thin enough rather, to where it lets a little bit of that uh, opaqueness and the grain show through. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to just come along the brim of the hat just like so.
And the brush I'm using is just a cheap, uh, I don't know, 10 cent throwaway brush that I bought on Amazon. It's just a square. I like the square because it's easy to control. You can see the edges of it nicely. As you can see, I'm able to do it pretty cleanly without you know, over brushing into the areas I don't want to. Okay, so the idea here is really just nice and faint. It's very, you know, barely noticeable. And then I have a towel nearby. I can just blot off the excess. And that'll really show off the facets of the carving, just like that. All right, and the uh, beard as well. We'll put a little bit of white in the beard. And mix a little bit more water in there, more pigment. All right, and uh, just going to try to be careful not to get that on the cheek. And the good news is the wood is already the perfect color for skin, so I'm not going to worry too much about trying to, uh, you know, make it perfect in, in terms of the... Uh, skin color, uh, close enough at least. What I mean to say is, it might not be exactly perfect, but it's as close to perfect as we need, that skin color. All right, I'll get those washes on there, just like so. Love how it really shows off all the facets of the wood. You can see all those little cuts, see all that detail. It's quite nice. Just kind of getting in between here, around some of the details and the hair. And guys, this doesn't have to be perfect. Don't, don't spend all day painting, uh, unless you really enjoy it, in which case, have fun, take your time. I'm going to do a tiny bit on the eyebrows as well, just a touch. Make them pop a little bit, do a little bit more. How about that? Okay. Then I'm going to grab another brush, do the same thing, mix into some red. Very, very light on the red. And just get the tip of the, just get the top of the hat. Just like so and try your best not to hit that hat, uh, brim, ah, as I hit it, <laughs> oh man, I jinxed myself, all right, and I almost forgot the, uh, the little ball, I'm gonna paint that white as well. And then finally, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the pigment, just on its own. I'm just gonna brush over the high points, just like so. Just to create the illusion of more detail. And the same thing on the beard. All along those facets. And it will bring it a lot of depth as well, which is what we want. Even a little on the hat uh, ball as well. And we can see how that just gives it a lot more color depth. A lot more um, aesthetically pleasing, nice to look at, uh, than just a, a plain a wash over the whole thing. All right, now... This project and other projects uh, like this and more focused on the realistic face are on my online school called Fundamentals of Woodcarving, and I have that linked below as well. You can check that out. There are some fun holiday sales going on there uh, as far as discounted rates. Uh, it's about the price of one class uh, to get you access to all the projects for a year. So anyway, that being said, uh, <laughs> I am so happy with the uh, 
the way this turned out was super fun and I hope that you guys try this out and if you do please let me know uh, how you enjoy the project and if you make it yourself in the comments below or uh, just any questions or thoughts or iteration ideas or anything so you can get back to me that way thanks guys appreciate your time